Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today is March 7th, and this is the EU US edition. Uh, at the moment, around the table, we have myself, Kevin Martins, Bruno Varachtin, and Pranav Singh. Uh, welcome, Bruno and Pranav. Appreciate you being here. And if anyone else joins, we'll welcome them in, of course, as always. And um, yeah, we're recording, so the video will be available afterwards as well. For today's agenda, uh, I thought we'd touch on the next LTS release, which is 2.440.2, the latest contributor spotlight publication, weekly release for this week. Uh, yesterday, we had a security advisory, so I want to make sure we note that down. Uh, just another uh, reminder about the Contributor Summit recap, uh, some notes on Google Summer of Code, the Jenkins Community Awards, uh, and uh, uh, just again, noting the JIRA upgrade for issues.jenkins.io, uh, some housekeeping regarding uh, Asia Docs office hours, the version documentation for Jenkins.io, uh, the tutorial revamps to use Docker Compose, uh, and lastly, on the agenda, I have the sponsor attributions page, which we've been discussing. Uh, is there anything other topics that we want to make sure we touch on or discuss today in Docs Office Hours? Nothing from my side. Thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So uh, first up on the agenda again. Uh, so on March twentieth, we're going to we anticipate the release of Jenkins LTS two point four four zero point two. Uh, the back the backports were just made available on Tuesday. Uh, I've already created the change log and upgrade guide pull request here. Um, so I do want to just touch on this real quickly. Um, but uh, it's not a large change log and upgrade guide this time around. Uh, however, uh, there were two there were a couple of different updates that uh, I've been um, touching base on with Basil Crow about. Uh, specifically, there were uh, two uh, Jakarta, Plugin updates, the AP, the activation and email APIs uh, were both updated. If they're not updated uh, at the same time or, or one after another immediately, there is going to be a breaking change. Um, similarly, uh, there was an open JDK update in the upstream that's also caused a breaking change. So what we wanted, so I wanted to make sure that we alert users to these things. So I'm including them in the upgrade guide. Um, as you can see here, I've put, added in a note stating that these updates are not specific to the LTS release, but um, they've happened in the last week and they are crucial. So I do want to make sure they're included in the upgrade guide. Um, this was the original uh, version of it that I took a screenshot of, but uh, I've updated it since to put that note at the very top of the upgrade guide for 2.2. .2. Um, I don't want to have any confusion. So it's probably best that it uh, starts it off um, and then change the updates to upgrades since it's the upgrade guide, not the update guide. So um, just a couple of things to note there. Uh, this is, like I said, it's ready for review um, and I will be uh, unavailable for the next two weeks. So uh, in the meantime, Mark Waite will be available to check on a couple of things and handle some things for me. Um, so like Doc's office hours uh, when he's available, stuff like that. Uh, and reviewing the upgrade guide before merging it for the actual release. So um, yeah, just to put on your radar, uh, it's like I said, it's ready for view. I'm open to as much review as possible. Um, I will be here uh, or I will be uh, available for the next 24 hours still. So uh, I'm still available and can help with anything and make any updates needed. Um, and then uh, just a small note here. So uh, as a result of the upgrade guide, the, the upgrade guide for the point one release, uh, including some code that ended up causing some issues. Uh, we're just making sure the upgrade guide and the change log both have screenshots to make sure that they're both rendering and uh, loading properly. So something to see from here on out. Next up on the agenda. So um, again, we've had our contributor spotlight going for a few months now. Uh, yesterday, we published Stefan Speaker's spotlight. So um, thanks to Stefan for collaborating and providing his insights. Uh, it's a really great story, and Stefan's a really uh, wonderful contributor. It was really nice meeting him in uh, Brussels at FOSDEM and the Contributor Summit. So um, just thanks for being part of the community, Stefan. And uh, yeah, if you have a chance, check that out and learn more about Stefan. Uh, the weekly 2.448 was released successfully on Tuesday. Uh, if I recall, there might have been some issues in the back end of things, but uh, everything went smoothly. The release went well. Um, there were just a couple of hiccups that needed to be addressed uh, in the back, like I said, on the back end, but nothing serious or worth noting here. 
Uh, there was a security advisory published yesterday. So thanks to Jenkins security team for uh, all of their work on uh, resolving these things, taking care of the advisories, publishing these things. Um, really, really great to have that be part of the process. And uh, it was specifically for plugins. This did not affect Jenkins core. Um, and so uh, as such, the weekly change log um, is just the weekly change log for 2.448. It was not a security release in that sense. So um, yeah, just something to be aware of there. Uh, so we published our contributor summit and FOSDEM recap uh, just on the 28th of February. So just about a week ago now, um, just a nice recap here that I was able to write up going through the presentation. We've got a link to the slide deck here so you can uh, review it and read through it and follow along. Um, and just, yeah, just a really nice experience. Thanks to everyone for their con contributions, for joining, for participating, for coming to FOSDEM, for just everything. Uh, what a great experience and what a wonderful contributor summit we were able to have. Uh, next up for the Google Summer of Code. So um, just a couple of weeks ago, we were officially accepted as a GSOC organization. So we have a blog post in the carousel on Jenkins.io has been updated to reflect that. Uh, we have nine draft proposals thus far. We've got a couple of returning contrib uh, GSOC contributors now as mentors in Harsh and Vandit Singh. So thanks to them for uh, coming back and joining. And we've also got a new mentor uh, from Lara. So welcome to Lara and thanks for joining up. I uh, appreciate it. Really great to see new folks coming and joining uh, the project and uh, participating in Google Climber of Code specifically. Uh, the contributor application period is going to start on March 18th, so uh, a couple weeks from now. And then the application period is going to end on April 2nd, so be aware of those timelines. Uh, the blog post that Alyssa um, and Jean-Marc have put together has a lot of the information and timelines and uh, key dates in there as well. So. Um, this is really crucial. This is a great place to just keep track of things, get that information. Um, there's also the Gitter channels. Uh, we're very, very active in the Gitter channels at this point in time. Lots of activity. Uh, Chris Stern is the uh, org admin or one of the org admins and has been replying to everyone that they possibly can and doing all the work they possibly can. Um, so thanks to Chris for everything that they do because uh, it's not just limited to Google Summer of Code, but um, yeah, just, just a lot of great actions are being taken, a lot of activity. Uh, we're getting submissions. There's still plenty of time to work on these things, but uh, things are looking good here. Uh, Bruno, any notes on GSOC that you want to share? Any insights that I maybe missed? No, nothing really important. We have uh, begun the um, review of the nine first proposals. So it's not yet official. It's some kind of uh, discussion between the contributors and the mentors. Uh, so we are reviewing the proposals and, you know, telling them uh, sometimes you have to dig deeper or it should be more precise, or this is a good idea, this should be more uh, developed, and so on. So it's nothing official for the time being. It's just a time where we give some advice uh, to the contributors with their first proposals. Not all of the projects have received a proposal yet. I think, um, for example, of Valentin Delay, a project about open rewrite recipes for Jenkins. And there is a lot of activity in the Gitter channels regarding this project, but not a proposal has been submitted yet, which is a good thing because I think that potential contributors are working on their proposal. If you want to get good proposals, of course, people have to spend some time on crafting them. So all is good. Uh, we're still on time. You can also onboard uh, new potential contributors. Uh, we still have plenty of time for that. But I would just give uh, an advice to potential contributors. Take your time. Uh, build your Jenkins muscles. And yeah, take your time. Do something good. And yeah, take your time. Sorry, I'm repeating myself, but take your time. Do something good. And that will be better for the whole community. Great. Thank you very much, Bruno. And I think it's nice that we're getting that activity in the Gitter channel. People are curious, they're interested. Um, that shows a lot of uh, initiative from the contributors and from mentors. Like this is just, that's great to see, even if um, the numbers are not necessarily as high as we had hoped for, uh, yep. it's quality, 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 quality. Um, you know, we're only gonna have so many projects anyway. So 
uh, we do need, we're going to end up filtering some things down, but like that excitement, that interest, that activity is huge and, and really shows just how, uh, how, how important the, not only, um, Jenkins is, but the Google Summer of Code participation for the organization is huge. It is. <laughs> Great. Cool. Thank you very much, Bruno. Um, and, uh, oh, um, are there any scheduled meetups coming up that we should note, or is it, uh, we're kind of like figuring things out and that will alert everyone when we have the next meetup scheduled? Yeah, uh, I don't think we have a date scheduled. Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, not yet. It will come when it will come, I guess. We presented, I think, uh, most of the projects uh, in the last two meetings. There are still one or two projects, I guess, but nobody showed interest for them. So I think it will stay as is. So no, no meeting scheduled for the time being. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Bruno. Next up on the agenda, so the Jenkins Community Awards. This was announced uh, recently enough uh, towards the end of January, yeah. Um, so the nomination periods have closed, uh, but the voting period has been open from the 22nd of February. It's open till March 22nd. Um, so if you have the time or if you have, uh, if you wanna check out the candidates, you can go to the individual award issues here. Um, each one will take you to the pinned issue in Jenkins.io's GitHub repository, where you can see the nominations. Uh, and then there is a voting form uh, that's available. And this is also in the announcement blog post that Alyssa put together. So um, you can access the voting form from either one, um, but it's going to be a voting form specifically for the Jenkins Contributor Awards 2024. Um, the the uh, voting period, like I said, will go to March 22nd, and then uh, the winners will be announced and awarded at CDCon this year, which is in April, I want to say 18th to 20th or 21st. I forget exactly what the end date is, but um, yeah, so same as last year. Uh, last year's winners cannot win again this year, um, so the nominations are a little different. Um, and then there's also a voting form for the uh, for the complete CDF awards outside of Jenkins project. Um, so this is where they'll have CDF ambassadors, contributors, stuff like that. Uh, Mark Waite did decide to uh, nominate me here for top, doc, top documenter. So if well. you want to vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah, right? Vote for Kevin. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. I don't like talking about myself, but we've been over this. Um, so that's the thing. You can vote if you want to. I would appreciate it. I don't know if I have to go to CDCon at that point, but we'll see. If, it, that's if I'm a winner. And uh, Kevin, hey. sorry to interrupt. Just one question. Uh, I know yeah. uh, who can vote for the Jenkins Awards. You just have to be a contributor in a way or another. But mm -hmm. uh, what about the other ones, the CDF one? Who can vote? Uh, that's a great question, and I'm sure the CDF, uh, the CD Foundation, would be more excited if they are all project contributors, Jenkins, mm -hmm. Tekton, I don't think that part matters as long as someone's a contributor to open source in some way, okay. shape or form, I think that's more their concern. But mm -hmm. um, I don't like they they advise that there's some kind of connection. But um, I mean, if people are coming to this meeting, they're, in, they're interested in some part of open source. So I would hope that there's some connection there. So, um, so let's say everybody sure. can vote. That's okay. Yeah, I think I, I mean, as long as you vote for Kevin, you're allowed to vote. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what we're going for. Um, no, I, I think it's just a matter of as long as you're part of the open source community, you have every right to vote in an open source Got it. presentation of whatever that might be. So, yeah. Uh, next up, so Jira upgrade for issues.jenkins.io. This is just a uh, this is a status page to let everyone know that there's going to be some downtime on March 12th from uh, 11 p.m. UTC to 2 a.m. UTC. Uh, so it'll be down for a few hours, but the upgrade shouldn't, this shouldn't cause any sort of disruption in service or anything along those lines. Um, this is specifically for issues.jenkins.io. So uh, users of Jenkins shouldn't run into any problems or anything like that. Um, it'll just be more if you're trying to report bugs or anything along those lines. 
Uh, and so this will happen. Um, this is really just to note, be aware of it. Uh, there will be more communications uh, as we get closer to it, maybe an email blast. Um, but yeah, just something to be aware of and uh, keep in mind. Shouldn't have uh, too much direct effect unless you're up at that time and trying to get on issues.jenkins.io. Uh, next up, the uh, docs office hours for this evening is canceled. So uh, Mark's not available to host as, as am I. Uh, so next documentation office hours for Asia will be the 15th. Uh, the version documentation build uh, site for Jenkins.io. So um, just a quick recap, this is the result of 2023 GSOC project to build Jenkins.io with an alternative build tool. Uh, the tools selected were uh, Antora and uh, it's a combination of Antora and Gatsby. Gatsby specifically for generated pages um, and some flexibility and more customization options. So uh, Chris Stern and Vandi Singh have been working on this. Uh, I've been helping Chris and Vandi with review, with finding any issues that might pop up, um, anything along those lines where I can assist with their uh, the blind spots they might have. I'm in the site a lot more than other folks. So um, just little things like that, navigation. Uh, and then Chris and I met with Daniel Beck, who's part of the Jenkins security team, uh, to just go over the generation process for security advisories, make sure that they're comfortable with this update because it is going to affect them as well. Uh, and we were able to reassure them that this is going to be a good move, that it's more powerful, that it's faster, that it's just a better experience overall. Uh, and so Daniel Beck left uh, pretty happy. So we had a great session with them, with him, uh, and we were able to, uh, yeah, just absolve a lot of the fears and like concerns that they had. So um, that was fantastic. Um, Chris and Vandi are continuing to work on this. This isn't uh, totally ready for production yet because we're looking at cost saving measures for Azure still to some degree. Uh, so once we get all that figured out, and I think we're getting to the point where it is figured out, um, this will come back into the, the discussion and part of the um, infrastructure milestones that we'll be working on in the coming weeks. Uh, and then on, additionally, on top of that, uh, Daniel Beck actually had created a pull request and submitted it, um, suggesting that we potentially have generated pages for each individual change log. So instead of having uh, an anchor link that takes you to the change log entry, but then also loads the rest of the change log. It would be a separate page for each release change log notes where it's just 2.426.3 and nothing more. Um, it's a faster load. There's not as much uh, noise going on that the user has to either sort through or, or just kind of like put up with. Um, I think it's a good move. I think it's a really nice and easy solution for something that could be very, um, you know, not something that we necessarily consider a lot, but could be very uh, limiting or detrimental to the user experience in some way, shape, or form. Just having to load that whole page, scroll through, find stuff, et cetera. So, um, yeah, everyone seems to be pretty on board with this idea. So, I think it's something that will eventually get uh, implemented, but we're not there yet. So, time will tell. But, yeah, I think it's a good idea. So. Uh, next up, so uh, we've now got the Maven, Python, and Node.js tutorials all revamped to use Docker Compose. Amazing. Again, uh, this is the result of another GSOC 2023 project being seen to completion. Um, thanks to Harsh and Bruno for their work on this. This is great. Um, and yeah, we're, um, we still got some work to do. Multi-branch pipeline tutorials next. There's a couple things there that need to be taken care of and addressed before we can really incorporate the Docker Compose properly and have it working, I guess. Um, unless there's been some change since we last met Bruno in that sense. Uh, not really. In fact, I I have a new pull request for the um, node uh, sample uh, source code because something is wrong. Um, but I guess we will have to wait until Mark uh, comes back to merge the PR. It's nothing important for the same being. It's just a problem of port 3000 instead of 5000. And then I will have a, uh, a node uh, code change also with a, within another PR. But nothing um, really important. So it's almost ready to be reviewed, uh, at least uh, when my two PRs will be uh, merged then we'll be able to have the tutorial that reflects correctly what's happening in the uh, sample source code repo. But yes, it's near completion, I would say. Great. And is the other um, 
I had this note from last week, Bruno, is the React code the other piece of it that you're waiting for the PR to be merged on? Or is that something separate entirely still? No, I haven't created yet. The code has been created, but I uh, haven't created the PR yet because uh, I think no one is there to review and merge it. Uh, so no hurry on that side. I have made a PR on another thing, just a port number that is not correct. And, and that's all. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, and then the the next thing on that too is that uh, once we get the tutorials revamped and get the documentation sorted in those areas, we're going to look at incorporating Docker Compose into the installation docs. Um, it's a better experience overall. It's a lot more secure. And frankly, uh, those two things alone are reason enough to update the documentation accordingly. So I'll be working with Bruno on that point and he'll be showing me the ropes so that I can get the Docker Compose integration going for installation. And last up on the agenda for today, uh, the adding the sponsor attributions. So uh, to recap this one, we've been discussing for a little while now, but essentially uh, JFrog wanted to make sure that they're attributed as a sponsor for the Jenkins project. We said yes, because that makes absolute sense. If they are, they should be attributed as such. Uh, however, we want to make sure that we're attributing them properly. Uh, and that led to a larger discussion of right now, uh, the Jenkins.io site only has uh, sponsor attributions at the very bottom of the main page here. Uh, so we were discussing adding a complete sponsors page that would showcase all of the sponsorships of Jenkins. Um, so that's now, uh, that process has been started. Uh, Basil Crow's created a sponsors page draft. Uh, we're looking at various levels and how to attribute sponsorships um, from anchor all the way down to bronze um, mirrors a different kind of sponsorship. So uh, it's going to be a separate category in that sense. But, um, you know, we're looking at what kind of services, credits, cost, like there are varying types of sponsorships and ways to sponsor. Uh, so we have to really take a look at all of that, and figure out what that equals out to essentially and like what level that means for each sponsor. Um, CloudBees, for instance, is an anchor sponsor. Uh, and AWS just granted us 60,000 credits to Jenkins. So like, that's one of those things where we have to see like, okay, AWS is clearly a very large sponsor. Does that make them anchor? Does that make them gold? What, like, what kind of levels does this get attributed to at that point? Um, on top of that, DigitalOcean's donated both last year and this year. Microsoft's donated. Um, and just recently, Ampere has donated two ARM64 servers um, and these are physical servers that are located at Mark Waite's house. Um, it's our first time sponsor getting uh, being sponsored by Ampere, uh, but it's been in the works now for about a year. Thanks to Bruno for all of his work and uh, keeping in contact with Dan and, uh, or no, not Dan, was it? <laughs> Aaron Williams, but uh, yes, that's my yeah. pleasure. <laughs> um you know what we also discussed with uh pine 64 uh ceo at fosdem uh tl lim and uh, today i received in the mailbox a few boards uh for evaluation um for jenkins so that's pretty cool uh, we got i haven't opened the pack the packet yet but we got um as far as i know two arm 64 boards and one risk five board so thanks a lot pine 64 for your support and um i it's been a, a few months but uh, i've been working with um a program called pioneer dev board program uh, it's some kind of consortium between risk 5 and milk 5 weapons to be i think a hardware maker or something and they should send uh jenkins uh risk 5 board uh, it's not a server, it's some kind of workstation, but that would help if ever we wanted to make the move to risk five. So, yeah, I don't know if we need a label, a special label or something for hardware donors, but they are uh, sponsors. That's a really interesting angle uh, to that end, Bruno, because that, that, it doesn't necessarily fit into one of no. these, uh, obviously. 
maybe there's like a monetary or value component we could look at for like what that mm -hmm. would look like. But at the same time, maybe there's a better way to categorize that sort of sponsorship. Like you said, like maybe mirror, maybe we have another one for hardware or like something along those lines. Um, because yep. the servers would technically fall under something similar to that, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, yes. So, <laughs> yeah. So I think yeah. there's definitely... Uh, room for discussion on that front uh, i would say if anything um it might be worth like yeah maybe commenting but on it and just like go ahead. they didn't ask for any kind of compensation or you know they don't want to be cited or whatever there is nothing they um they want from us but i think it's unfair not to tell about their support yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we don't have to necessarily attribute them as a sponsor on that page, but we could also somewhere submit a blog post, like saying yeah. thanks for the, you know, or, you know, um, a series of tweets, if we want to do like, one for each of them, or like, I, I don't know, we can figure something I mean, that can all be determined at another point. But um, yeah, I, I think acknowledging it and uh, highlighting it is something that we can definitely do. Um but yeah, maybe it doesn't fit on the sponsors in that in this scenario. Maybe it's meant for something else, or you know, yep. like I said, we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, I'm not opposed to writing up something, doing a blog post, doing some kind of highlight for them. Um, that's in, that sounds like a nice idea. So thank you, Gavin. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, and we've reached the end of the agenda for today. Uh, Pranav, I'm Bruno, fine. any other things that we didn't talk to talk about or that you want to discuss? Nothing on my side, Brad. Yeah, nothing on my side, I see. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, so in that case, we'll go ahead and wrap up now. Uh, the recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours, as usual. Uh, I'll make sure to post it on the community discourse site. Uh, and then, yeah, um, I, I won't be here for the next couple of weeks. So thanks, as always, for joining. I'll see you, see you soon. Uh, and in the meantime, take care, stay safe. Uh, and yeah, say hi to Mark for me next week. <laughs> we'll do. Bye. Thank you, Kevin. Bye-bye.